in today's episode we will be deploying the Duna communications network that you see on the screen, but let's get right into it. So, as I said in the previous episode, these two episodes were intertwined. In the previous episode we have been talking about the Duna Sciencer lander, and in today's episode we will be launching the Duna communications network and we will be using the Tundra rideshare adapter with lots of lots of small satellites and look all of them are arriving at Duna and yes once again I was hoping that this big satellite would be a relay but we don't have yet a relay capable of relaying pretty much anything so sadly those two are you know direct dishes however we can still deploy all the satellites it just means that the core stage will need to do a little bit of extra work all right with our orbital insertion burn coming up in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and ignition. Look at those Merlin engines lighting up. Beautiful. It's a screenshot if I ever knew one. All right. So, with periapsis of roughly 581, as in you can see, we still have, you know, Duna Science Lander ship going for the periapsis. So, as I said, these episodes were intertwined. However, we are currently on the apoapsis. We have inserted ourselves successfully around Duna and we need to be doing the deployment of all those satellites. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be deploying several satellites. The good thing about those is that they are already ready-made relays. The sad part is that once I deploy them, I have literally zero control over them. I can only deploy the solar panels and that's it. Yeah. I know, it sucks. Well, doesn't matter, we'll do it anyway. So, this ship was launched back at the time when the other, when it was dependent on the relay and yeah. So, world first. Orbital survey of Minmus is done. Woohoo! Which means that our orbital surveyor will actually done a lot. Will do a lot. Good. Extending the solar panel, see? And once this is done, I can do diddly squat. <laughs> yeah. All right. I will rename the vessel. So I want to call it, you know, Relay Duna High Altitude Relay. Mark one. And I want to flag it as Relay. So, yes, they will, that will, there will be a lot of this in today's episode. So a lot of deploying the small satellites. So... Next maneuver, we will be posting in a little bit lower orbit. So, sadly, uh, normally all these satellites would eventually go into their own orbits on their own power. However, given that the antenna that on the relay is no longer a relay, but instead a direct antenna, means I have no means of relaying the data back to Kerbin. So, that means that this COM deployer needs to do every single thing. So, sorry, my interplanetary start is a bit messy due to the removal of the remote tech mod, but, well, yeah, what can you do? Alright, so, uh, no more action on the Duna Science lander ship. Okay, this will bug the hell out of me. Yeah, alright, never mind. We have connectivity, which is important, and we have three minutes until the burn which we will use to reduce our periapsis to roughly, roughly 500 by 500. We did, we're just eyeballing it. We're doing it Kerbal style. All right. 30 seconds to burn. Three, two, one, and ignition. I thought that this would be a, you know, well respite from the constant Moon and Minmus missions that we have been doing. And finally, it took a really long time, but our satellites have eventually arrived around Duna orbit. So, see? Duna, Lansha, Duna Science Lander is the bane of my life. All right. Anyway, let's now tweak the orbit a little bit. At the apoapsis, we will be changing the inclination and the periapsis, we will be changing the... Um, yeah, so I'm actually not, this is not planned, I don't have a set plan on how to put it. My Mark II network, which will be deployed there eventually, will be a lot better. However, these landers costed me a huge and insane amount of money, 
and I already launched them, so if I've now abandoned them, I would be bankrupt, simply put. So I'm actually using what I can with what I have to do with, and uh, there we go, and I'm trying to make the best use of it that I possibly can. These satellites using the antennas are capable of reaching up to 7, I think it's 750, no problem. They should be up to 1.5 million meters if I'm correct, so we're gonna decouple this guy and extend the solar panel, and they have a small re receiver, so they should not be a problem. There we go. See? All beautiful. Rename, and we'll be doing another. Relay, Duna, 25 degree, 500 kilometer relay one. And I'm gonna do 20 more just to be on the safe side, so I hope you will enjoy the repetition. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of, you know, changes. I'm just dumping up the satellites in the orbit because eventually they will go make circles, they will make orbits, they will, you know, get into their respective... If I wanted to be really accurate, then I would need to go into an orbit that will make sure that once I deploy the satellite, it will go into its rightful place. However, that would require the satellite to have its own power and be able to actually control the satellite. And as you can tell in the comnet window above, I can do very, very limited control of the probe because I don't have the connection, obviously. All right. So that's a couple of satellites put in. Let's put another one. Inclination change, a few more. Well, you got the gist. All right, then we put it this way. By the way, I'm going to use this episode to talk a little bit more about what I plan to use or what I plan to do in the future episodes. So I've planned it out in the way where you know, in the next episode, we have the EVE SciSat deployer, which will be deploying the science satellites around EVE, which are all small relays as well. However, each of them has the small antenna that will be able to, for a direct communication back to Kerbin. So once again, no relays, but all of the sets compared to these Duna sets will have a connection back to Kerbin, meaning we will be do we will be able to do a lot more science, a lot more scans, a lot more, you know, everything. So that's the Eve Sciencer that will be going. And hopefully, uh, if that gives me amount enough science, I will be building, I will be able to unlock the relay that will give me, you know, uh, big antennas and all that jazz. Oh, look at this. We have decoupled the... Oh, this is nice. Oh, yeah. All right. So, see, we are already halfway when it comes to the deployment of the satellites. Now, decouple. Bang. Bye-bye. Okay. And extend the solar panels and extend the antennas. So, once we get a decent relay, our communication network should be fully operational. So, no problems there. So relay, do now, I think this is, well, let's say, what, minus 25 degree, 500 kilometer relay, okay, one, yeah, I'm not very imaginative when it comes to renaming my relays, but it doesn't matter, look at this, so all of those have the connectivity, the only thing is that we don't, can we cannot do the relay, that's the problem, we cannot bounce the signal back to, you know, Kerbin. So we are pretty much on our own. The, the, the Duna, you know, science, oh, sorry, Comnet deployer ship has its own connectivity, as you can tell, and it has connection to many satellites, but like I said, it cannot really. Right, so uh, Duna science lander batteries, yeah, I don't care, it will be come back, it just went into the shadow, so that's fine. Okay, let's do another orbit, and then we'll be deploying more satellites, and then changing again the and changing again the inclination because you can achieve robustness when it comes to satellites in two ways one is that you put you know equatorial several satellites around precise orbit or that you put a big mesh up in different inclinations different positions uh, in the sky and hope that the sheer volume of the satellites it will account for any you know communication gaps and whatnot and that's exactly what i'm trying to do here since i cannot have control over satellites i'm just you know dumping them willy-nilly and hopefully that will suffice 
So, relay two. And now we should probably do another maneuver where we will be doing a bit more inclination. So, I'm thinking now we should go polar. Yeah, let's go nuts. All right. Polar apoapsis. Once again, we put apoapsis around 500 by 500. And, well, that should be good enough. And we are already late for the burn. Well, we don't care ultimately, so we just, you know... We have total of 1.5 kilometers per second in this stage. And we're gonna use pretty much all of them. So, all right. All right, decouple. Extend the solar panels, you know, you know the drill by now. So, yeah. What can I say? We had a Luna window and I was really hoping that all Moon and Minmus missions would basically allow me to unlock the relay, you know, satellite that will have the range. However, we were only able to unlock the direct communication satellite. So, well, lesson learned. Okay. Now we'll do a little bit more and then let's see which, where, if we do deploy another. Once again, add the apoapsis. I've changed a little bit my orbit just to make it, you know, slide into a different position, so as, as much as I can. So, yeah. What can I tell you? I've deployed a few more off camera. Well, I didn't want to bore you to the hell with the repetition. However, it's a tedious job, but it needs to be done because I plan on doing a lot on the surface of Duna and uh, yes, we will need to actually do a lot. So I'm actually placing now this guy in almost, well, how much do we have? Do, can we do a, you know, slightly inclined orbit? Yes, we can. Okay, and that will be in two hours. So, okay, let's do the inclination change. Look how robust already the network is. This is something that I wanted to show. So the sheer volume of satellites means that the signal will get bounced eventually somewhere. So if you really suck at precise positioning, like I do, then it's best that we just, you know, dump them willy-nilly and hope for the best. Look at that. Beautiful. Do we have any more? I think we have three more if my eyes don't deceive me. And we have some even experiments. Look, RPWS and something that will be scanned around Duna. At least we will do something. Okay, decouple. Dang. Extend. 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 Beautiful. See? Rename the vessel. Relay Duna Equatorial 500. Kilometer Relay 1. All right. Well, oh, it's not equatorial. I thought it was equatorial. Well, no matter. I'm in post-commentary, so, yeah. All right, and a little bit further, just to make another couple of circles. I'm basically in raising my orbit by 200 kilometers just to make sure that when I do an orbit or two, that the initial satellite gets away so that they're not really exactly in the same place. So that's kind of my reasoning. All right, so another circle around the duna circle by circle i mean orbit yeah all right time to deploy well i've deployed pretty much every one i cut out the rest because well you've seen it enough times you know how to do it so i think that will be good uh relay we're gonna call this one no probe duna main relay yeah, and it will also have some science. Uh, relay station mark one. Oh, relay station one. Yeah, we don't need the mark. It's just a station number. All right. So that actually puts this one in the orbit around Duna at a nice place. And this was an. If this was still a relay, now my work would have been complete, and I would have signal all over the place, and I wouldn't need to worry. However. That's not the case, so I guess we will have to suffice with this network being as is. So, you know what to do, smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're already not subscribed and want to see more, and I will be seeing you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, this is Groundworks, signing off.